I'm Joy Chu, a former scientist turned content creator, and the goal of my YouTube channel is to help people discover the joy of cooking with science. For my first video, I wanted to explore a question that we rarely ask, but is foundational to understanding the science of cooking. What exactly is cooking? I know it's a super basic question, but if you stop and think about it, there can be a number of different ways to answer it. Let's start with one high-level definition. Cooking is transforming our food from its raw natural state into something that's not only edible, but flavorful and delicious. A great example of this is the humble yet amazing chicken egg. We all know that the inside of a fresh egg is filled with fluid, but when we cook the egg in a hot pan, the egg white, and eventually the yolk, will solidify into a breakfast favorite, the fried egg. Okay, now we have a high level definition, but let's go a little deeper to see what's really happening. Here's version 2.0. Cooking involves breaking down or rearranging the components that make up our food, most often with the help of heat. You can almost think of this like taking Lego pieces apart and rebuilding them into different structures. Now it's time to unpack some questions. What are these components and what is heat? First, let's talk about the components. Your food contains tiny, tiny things called atoms, or bunches of atoms called molecules. Different foods have different kinds and arrangements of atoms and molecules, which are responsible for making your food smell, taste, feel, and cook a certain way. But not just your food, everything else in your kitchen, your cookware, the stovetop burners, even the air in your oven, has atoms and molecules too. Cooking happens when all of these atoms and molecules interact with one another. So how does this work? To illustrate, I've got a couple of red and white balls. Now let's imagine that these balls are molecules. Molecules need energy to vibrate or move. So if I shake them a little, that's like me giving them energy. And the harder that I shake them, the more energy they have. Now let's imagine also that this red molecule has more energy than this white one. When they bump into each other, the red molecule passes off energy to the white molecule. And this transferred energy is what we call heat. Basically, every time you turn on the stove, oven, or another cooking appliance, energy is getting transferred from the molecules in the heating source to your food. And this heat is what jumpstarts many of the chemical reactions you eventually see and taste. Going back to our egg example, we can trace the whole process of cooking the egg as a series of energy transfers. When you turn the burner on, the energy from the burner is going to the atoms in your pan. The energy from the pan then goes directly to heating the oil, or butter, if you're extra indulgent. And as soon as the egg goes into the pan, energy from the fatty acids in the oil transfers to the molecules in the egg, turning a liquidy mess into a solid piece of fried goodness. If you've already been cooking a good portion of your life, you're probably wondering why knowing all this about atoms or molecules or heat matters. After all, most of us, including myself, have survived in the kitchen without knowing. I'm not here to say that you have to know this to be a good cook, but it most certainly will help make cooking a much more positive experience. Understanding what different kinds of food are made of and how they respond differently to heat is like getting to know people Everybody has different personalities and interests, and how you interact with one person may be different from how you interact with somebody else. But at the end of the day, the best way to build a relationship with someone is to know them as well as you can. So if you take the time to understand your food, it'll be much easier for you to know how best to prepare it and get it to taste the way you want. And you'll be able to do this consistently because you know exactly what's happening in the cooking process. At this point, you might be wondering how temperature fits into the discussion on heat. Stay tuned as we'll cover this next time. If you enjoy watching this video and want to learn more about the science of everyday cooking, like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching and see you in a couple of weeks.